there on Facebook world, Instagram. I'm sure you enjoy that praise and worship we had on to this evening. But you have no reason to fear. God is with you. Just know that. God is with you. No matter where you are, or what you're doing, what's going on, God is right there in your midst. Just call out to him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I, I take it an honor and a privilege to be before you again tonight. It's a privilege just to be in the land of the living. It's a blessing. And I thank God every day for a new purpose. <laughs> for every day he has something new for us to do. To uplift his kingdom. So right now, God, I stand before you. Thank you for this time again to speak your word. To allow you to speak through me, this vessel that you have purpose in the earth to speak your words, to help those in need, to turn those from darkness to your light. And I ask tonight that, that you speak to their hearts. Allow them to open their hearts and their minds to see what it is that you are saying to them. That they will be better beings in this earth for you, God. Do works for you, God. That you will be uplifted and you will continuously get the glory and the praise and the honor that is due to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. Well, tonight I come before you with the word that God has purposed in me. It's, it's, the, the title is Purpose for a Purpose. Purpose for a Purpose. There's a lot of us out here wondering what is going on? Why am I here? But just know Jesus, he, he never makes a mistake. God never makes a mistake. You're here for a purpose. You're here for a purpose. He purposed you to be here. So if you open up your heart and listen to his voice, you'll hear what it is that he's saying to you to do. So we're going to start tonight with um, 1 Peter 2 and 9. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So, we're protect a peculiar people. He has chosen us specifically to do a work for him in this earth. So in life, we're all searching for significance. We're all searching for meaning, for purpose, and innate desire in earth, in each of us, for our life to matter. To live and leave a legacy, we all want a purpose. But do you know what your value is to God? Do you know that you were created on purpose, for a purpose? So let's define that word purpose tonight. Purpose, the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Let's go to Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. The reason for which something exists, or the reason something is done or created. So there's a reason for you. There's a reason why you're here on this earth. So don't think you're just here to be here to do what you want to do. It's a higher calling on you. Your purpose for a reason. Ephesians 2 and 4. But God was rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do y'all get that? He saved us from the darkness, brought us to his life, and set us in heaven with him. In heavenly places. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. He wants to show us his love. Amen. His grace. Through, his, through Christ Jesus. His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. He wants to show us that. So tonight, if you will open your mind and open your heart to receive what he's saying, you'll be able to see his love. You're ready to feel his grace 
to know that he's always with us. Right? Amen. All right. The next, next verse. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. That's a gift. Amen. He saved us. Amen. What if he didn't decide to, to change his mind? Like, Lord, I can't go. God, I can't. I can't. Mm -mm. I can't go through this. Where would it be? But it's a gift. He did it for us. We didn't ask him to. We needed him to. <laughs> he saved us. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work your way to this. He's given it to us by grace, through his love. All because he loved us. You can't work your way into his love. You just got to believe in him. Not of your works. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So we're here to do good works. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we're ordained to walk in good works. In good works. Amen. Not just walking through life, doing what you want to do, and, you know, on your own steps, on your own time, calling on Jesus when you need him. No, no his purpose is to be better, to do great things for him. Yes, amen. And this is something that I struggle with in life. Mm -hmm. I struggle with identity, with my purpose. Growing up, I was the baby of four of my household siblings. And of course, the baby usually gets all the burn ins of the jokes. Y'all know that. <laughs> they get paid all the most. That was me. So I was called adopted, told that I didn't belong, that I was too different to be a part of my family. Not to say that these things or jokes hurt me, but sometimes those words, those things, when you're little, they kind of stick with you through life. You know? It stuck with my mental growing up. And as I grew up, it felt like I was um, I was catching on to life just a little slower than everybody. Everybody was moving a little faster than me. Or they were doing things just a little bit better than me. I felt as if I was always a little behind the eight ball, as they say, you know? <laughs> I just didn't seem to fit in. I didn't know how, I, I didn't know what my purpose was. And because I didn't know who I was, and I was, look, I was looking for that in others. I saw it through others, how they saw me, what they felt about me, how they judged me. That's how I saw myself, as very many of you may feel today. Until I got older and went through many tests and trials, I went through suicide attempts, y'all, drinking excessively, partying, just on a path of destruction. And that's some of you out there today, you're on a path of destruction. But until you realize, like I did, that I already had purpose. Before even being in my mother's womb, God said he knew me. He knows you. He purposed you before you created in the flesh. He made you in his mind. He made you in his mental before he brought you to the earth. So let's go there, Jeremiah 1 and 5. Jesus. 
He desires us to spread the good news of the gospel. That's our purpose. To spread the good news of God. Sometimes we're so busy with our everyday life, as things are getting back to our new norm, <laughs> that we forget the purpose behind our lives. We're trying to please our boss, please our kids, our husbands, our wives. You know, we just forget to speak something good to somebody. We're so consumed with our lives that we don't look at our neighbor. We don't try to help them. But that's our purpose. We're here to help them, to lead them, to guide them to Christ, right? Amen. We forget the purpose behind our lives. We're drowned by the purpose and the demands of our everyday lives that we don't realize that God has a greater purpose. He has raised us up to show us his power and that his name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Let's go at Exodus 9 and 16. He wants us to continually proclaim his name in the earth and his powers. We don't do anything of our own will, do we? God has given us all authority and all power to do all things. It's not of our own might. If we can do it ourselves, what we need Jesus for? We need Jesus to help us. That's why he came, because need, we needed him. Exodus 9 and 16. For now I will stretch out my Oh, excuse me. And in, in, in very deep for this cause, have I raised thee up for to show in thee my name power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. He wants us to declare him. Not boast about what you did, because you ain't done nothing. God gave me that idea. Yes, he did. Give glory to him. Thank you, God, for that idea. Thank you, God, for that pay raise that I didn't even ask for. It ain't about nothing you did at the job. God is looking out for you. Give him glory. So we mistakenly think we're in control. I got it. I did that girl. But God always knows how to put you back in place to see your purpose. You up there on your path, so he knows how to bring you back down to reality. Oh God, I'm so sorry, Jesus. That was you. So there is a God-given purpose for everyone, even those who resist him. He gives you purpose too, whether you want to see it or not. Because God is going away, and neither is your purpose. So you might as well stop running for it, from it, stop hiding from it. He'll be right there. That's right, run to him. Don't run from him. Run to him. Y'all run away with all these excuses. I had plenty of excuses myself. As we all do. But ultimately, these excuses are the exact reason God purposed you in the earth. That excuse you use, that's why he wouldn't use you for him. Believe it or not. Because no one is perfect. You can try, as I've tried, to be perfect. All my life I've tried to be perfect. I'm such a perfectionist. You know, like everything just got to be perfect. If I play something, it just got to go how I planned it. Oh, it's ruined in my mind. Mm -hmm. I thank God he's delivered me from that, Lord. Because <laughs> thank thank sometimes we plan to do things, but that's not what God planned for you. That's right. That's right. So it's okay. God got you, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've been a perfectionist most of my life. But it always weighed me down in the end. Caused me to question everything I did. And even worse, caused me to question God. I second guess what I knew God was telling me to do or saying, uh, saying for me to do. And I did the total opposite. I know all of us have been there with our parents that don't, don't go there. Don't do that. Close that door, don't look in there. But that's the exact thing we did. <laughs> right when they walked out, we did what they told us not to do. But we did exactly the opposite. Everything that told us instructed us not to do, we did it. <laughs> and of course, that led to trouble. Yes. But we eventually saw what they were shielding us from. Even if we had to make the mistake ourselves, the lesson was learned most of the time the hard way. <laughs> but they remained in love. Our parents remained in love and they stayed by our sides. 
and help to see us through, right? That's Jesus. Jesus did the same thing for us. Because, you know, he's the only perfect one. He was born perfect. There was no sin to grant him. God purposed Mary to be his mother. He was formed in her room without consummation, on purpose. He was made perfect. There was no sin. He was created with purpose. Mary was purposed to carry the Savior of the world. Jesus was born to save the world from sin. That's us. His purpose was to come to the earth, to heal, deliver, restore, hope in God, put the faith in God, and save us from our sins. And how was he the purpose? How was he purposed to do that? He became the offering. He died to save us all. He came, he conquered, he finished his purpose for us. He did exactly what God instructed him to do. What an awesome purpose. What an awesome purpose. And he did all that and died, but he still didn't leave us comfortless. He left the Holy Spirit with us to dwell within us. So we should never feel like we're alone. The Holy Spirit is with us. So that leads me to believe that everything we do in life was made to point us right back to our Creator. It points our hearts and our minds back to Jesus. All arrows point to Jesus. So no matter your excuses, God will and can use you for His glory. I'm a living example. He used me. And I'm not ashamed to say, yeah, I was out there in my own sin doing any and everything I felt like I was big and bad enough to do. <laughs> Running from God and his divine will for my life. Seeking counsel and approval. Seeking my worth in others. Thinking I had all the answers. Mm -mm. So sad. <laughs> Thinking I had all the answers. Trying to figure everything out by myself. I was out there so depressed and down, I was popping pills and drinking and myself to sleep, wondering if I wake up the next morning. If I did wake up, I was still wondering why. Because yeah. Satan had my mind, y'all. Yeah. Satan will do any and everything to keep you from your divine purpose in this earth, yeah. if you let him. Yeah. And why do you think he's coming after you so hard? He knows, he knows what purpose in you. He knows what God placed in you to do. So he can do any and everything to do, every obstacle in your way to keep you from it. Yeah. Like I say, a thief, he, he's a thief. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, right? He a thief. And I ain't never known no thief to go out to something that ain't worth nothing. They can bring it to the empty house and steal nothing. What is a steal? No, you have value. You have purpose. You want to overcome, overcome those thoughts and those distractions of Satan. I used to say that. Something good must be about to happen because it's going to be hard, y'all. Lord. Jesus, what is it? Show me. <laughs> Man, I just get him off my back because do what you want me to do. Because that's why he's coming after you to keep you from doing what God wants you to do. So I was still walking in my pity and anger and hurt and pain over and over again every day. But through it all, God remained right by my side. He said, my grace is sufficient. Through his grace and mercy, he saw me through. And he can see you through too if you just believe. Just like he uses me today, he can use you too. With all of your excuses, with all your character flaws, your failures, your sins, your shortcomings, and all. We had the only ones that had character flaws and sins and failures. If you believe it or not, some of the Bible heroes had the same issues we had. But God still used them for his glory. Let me give you all a few examples. Abraham. Abraham lied several times about Sarah. He would try to sacrifice his only son. He plotted to obtain promised offspring with Sarah's suggestion, etc., etc. But God honored and blessed him mightily with abundance, which led him to be the father of many nations. Let's go on over to Moses. Moses 
was a murderer. He avoided God's direction with excuses of his poor speaking skills. I tried that one too, y'all. I don't know. <laughs> he don't give you what to say. <laughs> Just go and be there and do what he say. It's gonna come. He had anger issues, but God still honored Moses and saved all his people. Peter. Peter was quick tempered. He snapped off at you in a minute. <laughs> He denied Jesus three times, was rebuked by Paul for refusing to associate with the Gentiles, but God still used him mightily at Pentecost, which led to the first century church, which has been instructing and encouraging believers for 2,000 years, y'all, because of Peter, that mal-tempered man. So y'all, y'all, I tell you something, she got to say no to Y'all better hold me back or she gonna hold me. Yeah. Oh, he still can use you. Yeah. He still can use you. Yeah. Paul, he persecuted Christians, y'all. Yeah. He killed them, imprisoned them, persecuted Christ himself. But God, listen to what God called him. He said, Paul is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, before the kings, and before all the children of Israel. God used him mightily to author most of the books of the New Testament. And he even introduced Christ to the Gentiles, y'all. So in, in all of his persecutions and imprisonments, God flipped it around for him. He started leading the people to Christ. He started doing the total opposite. And y'all know this last one. Adam and Eve. They were at the beginning, y'all. <laughs> They disobeyed God. And Adam blamed Eve, and Eve blamed the serpent. <laughs> they both sinned, though. <laughs> so it don't matter, they both was in sin. <laughs> they broke their relationship with God, as many of us have today. And you broke your relationship with God, and you're like, Lord, you don't need me no more. I done turned my back on God. He ain't got nothing good for me no more. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Even though they were both thrown out of Eden, banned, and they could never return. But God's plan of purpose for them, it revealed forgiveness and hope. Which proves God has a plan, a hope, and a future for all mankind. And that includes you, personally. Just know that you are forgiven, whatever it is. You're forgiven. You have purpose. Let's go to Jeremiah 29 and 11. You have purpose. Yeah. Don't believe them words that's been over you. You ain't never gonna be nothing. Right. You just want your daddy. Yeah, I'm just like my daddy. Jesus. <laughs> In heaven, I sure am. His DNA runs right through me. Yeah. <laughs> but you have purpose. Yes. Cast out all those thoughts. That's not from God. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So I'll just say you, you ain't never nothing thoughts of peace. So you know that can't be from God. In the Amplified version on my phone it says, Be but indeed for this very reason. This is Exodus 9. I have show I have allowed you to live in order to show you my power. He wants to show you his power. Through his words of peace. Y'all can't inject or in, in, uh, indulge in those negative words and negative thoughts and negative attitudes and think that you're in peace. That's not peace. That's not being in love. Whoever spoke those words to you are not being in peace or not being in love. That's not from God. So cast it down. Because he wants you to know your identity. Through his eyes. Through his heart. Through his love. He wants you to know your value, your worth to him. You need to know who God made you to be. Know your purpose, why you're here, what you're created to do. And it's all about God's timing. You need to know when you're supposed to do it and get it done. Time is of the essence. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You're supposed to live each day like it's your last. And do your 
purpose in this earth, which he created you to do. And when I was writing this or thinking about what the Lord was having me to say, he brought to my mind Hezekiah. Hezekiah was, was the, a great king. Let's go to 2 Kings 18 and 1 3. You can read about Hezekiah's story in 2 Kings um, chapters 18, 19, and 20. But he was a great king. And he knew what his purpose was. He was a follower of Christ. So let's go there. 2 Kings 18 and 1 through 8. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Eli, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. He was 25 years old, y'all, when he became king. And he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, did. Y'all know who David was? He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days, children of Israel did burn incense to it. And he called it Nehesta. So that was an idol. They were worshiping idols. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he claimed to the Lord, and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whatsoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. He smote the Philistines even unto Gaza and the borders thereof from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, his son of Eli, king of Israel, that Shalomosner, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. But Hezekiah, he was 25 years old when he became king, y'all. 25. Who would y'all doing at 25 years of age? Can you imagine being a ruler of a whole, ruler of anything at 25? <laughs> and he reigned for 29 more years. He did right in the sight of the Lord. He removed high places of pagan worship, broke down images of idol worship. He trusted and relied confidently on the Lord. He clung to the Lord. He didn't turn away from him. Faithfully, He, he, he was faithfully in following him. He kept all the commandments that God asked him to do. No matter what was said about him or done to him, he was successful wherever he went. Do y'all know why? He was successful everywhere he went. Because he pleaded to the Lord. Anything the Lord asked him to do, he did. Every day he had, he had purpose on him. And he finished his purpose every day. Now I'm going to read that in the Amplified. Now it came about in the third year of Hosea, the son of Eli, king of Israel, son of Judah. He was 25 years old when he became king. He reigned not 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Abi, the daughter. Hezekiah did right in the sight of the Lord in accordance with everything that David's father and ancestor had done. So he's just following after David. And listening to what God is telling him to do as well. He removed the high places of pagan worship, broke down the images, memorial stones. That's a lot of that going on today, breaking down memorial stones. And cut down Esher. It ain't too bad, though. He also crushed two pieces of the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, Israelites had burned incense to it, and it was called Nashah, a bronze sculpture, which is an idol, an idol of God. Has God trusted in the Lord? He would like coffee on the Lord, the God of Israel, so that after him there was none like him among all the kings. For he clung to the Lord, he did not turn away from God. He followed him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. So he was a powerful man of God. There was nothing he would not do for God. 
So he trusted in the God. But one time, one day he got sick. That's down um, 2 Kings 20. He got sick. But he trusted in God so much that when he was at death, he asked God, God, don't you remember who I am? I know who I am. You told me who I am. Don't you remember my good works? My goodness towards you? How I fully trusted in you, did your work diligently, brought others to know you, to trust you, restored their faith in you. He, he trusted in God so much and believed in all that he had done for God. He said, oh Lord, give me a little bit more time.
Wave your arms. It's exalting him. <laughs> yes. From your heart. Yes. Show him how much you care. What you think about him. God, you're awesome. You're wonderful. Yes. You're omnipotent. And he'll never leave you. Amen. So worship him every day. Find time to worship God every day. Yes. Your purpose to do that. Help someone else worship. Show them what worship is. Number two, love your neighbors. Tell your story. Come together, commune together to help each other. Be a family. That's what church is, y'all. A family. A family that purposes to encourage, to lead, to guide, and help each other. That's fellowship. Fellowship you want to another. Don't hold what you're going through to yourself. Share it with somebody. They might be pur purpose to help you through whatever it is you're going through. Yeah. A lot of people say a closed mouth won't get fed. Oh, yeah. Don't be in pride. Amen. Talk to your neighbor. You in church. Talk to your neighbor. They might have been through a similar situation and know what God did to help them through. And they can share it with you. Number three, be like Jesus. Grow up in the way of Christ. Put on his mind, his words, his attitude. Grow up in Christ. No, they say we come in, we're babes, but you don't stay babes forever. You got to grow up. So don't grow old and never grow up in Christ. That's not what he purposed us to do. No. Get a little bit more knowledge about Christ and, and yeah. find out more of your purpose every day. Right. That's discipleship. To be like Jesus. Discipleship. Number four, be unselfish. Don't be selfish. Be generous. Give back to others. To your family, your friends, your community, your church. We're all called to be ministers if you know it or not. Because God has instructed us all to serve and love him and others. God has given you talents. He's given you gifts, extraordinary abilities. You can use them to help others. Why keep it to yourself? Why do you think he purposed that in you? For you to just sing in the shower? For you to just help whoever's in your house out of just help your church, not the community, just your church. No. He wants you to share that. Let's go to 1 Peter 4 and 10. He says it in 1 Peter 4 and 10. Help others in any way. That's ministry. And use it for his glory. That's why he gave it to you, to use it for him. To win souls for Christ, for his kingdom. To help others in need. 1 Peter 4 and 10, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So as God gave you the gift, and he ministered to you, do the same for somebody else. Minister to them. Help them to see God and hear God. And to show them what their gift is. God will show it to them if they ask him. Number five. Tell of his love and goodness. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18 through 20. Tell of his goodness. It's pointless to keep his goodness inside. I know if y'all had some good chicken at a good chicken spot, girl, you going down. I ain't never had no chicken that good. I don't know what they do with that chicken. Y'all spare the word about that chicken. <laughs> or anything that's good that y'all come across. A good movie. A good deal on the car. Y'all better go in. Yeah. I got a good deal. <laughs> yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him his love and goodness. Share the wealth. Share it. Second Corinthians 5 and 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To it that God has in Christ reconciled the world unto himself, 
not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as through God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. You can go ahead to the 21st. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. In him we are made righteous in God. Amen. So be a witness for God. Tell your story. How God brought you through. What you went through and how God brought, how God brought you out. Somebody's waiting to hear that. Your purpose can be to tell them your story. And to bring them out of their darkness. That's called witnessing. Tell your story, your personal experience with Christ, and Christ's goodness shown towards you. Share your testimony with boldness. With boldness. Tell someone that might be going through what God helped you through. Give them hope. The same hope that God gave you, you can extend that same hope to somebody else. That's called witnessing. And I believe this is what Hezekiah accomplished every day. This is why God was with him and why he was successful in all that he did. Because he wasn't afraid to talk about God. To do God's good works. To cast down the evils of the world. He did his purpose every day and he finished it. Come on, y'all can start projects and finish it. I'll get that tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll never come. Like Bishop was saying about the about the the, the little girl house. Yeah. He said he bought a house when she was a baby. Yeah. Started it and never finished it. Yeah. But what good is to start something and never finish it? No one's ever gonna see the finished product. Amen. Unless they look at the picture, I guess. But do what God is telling you to do. Finish it. Don't be half in, half out. Be all the way in. And Hezekiah, he knew that God was the only one who could forgive your past. I believe he spread that word. He can forgive God, can forgive your sins, your shortcomings. He can give you purpose for living and give you a home in heaven. All you gotta do is believe in him. And believe that he can do what he said he can do for you. So today it's your responsibility and purpose to reach those who do not know Christ. Now I know everybody here, and y'all out there know at least one person that don't know Jesus. Your purpose is to lead them to Christ. Just as you were led to Christ. Connect them with Christ. Or if they are already saved and they just strayed away, reconcile them back together with Jesus. How? Through worship, through fellowship, discipleship, through ministry and witnessing. All you gotta do is be obedient to what God is telling you to do. And do it diligently with confidence. And finish it. Jesus finished it. His last words was, it is finished, it's finished. He was saying, hey, y'all, get me down from up here. Can't do this no more. God, I'm sorry, Lord, Father, you're going to have fun tonight, y'all. He came that far. I don't want to finish it. Don't give up. God's got you. It's all for a greater purpose. So don't go on thinking that you don't have purpose. He has so much for you to do. It's so much in the earth to do. I know y'all can go out and look around every day and see something that you can do for the glory and honor of God. To uplift God and his kingdom. Not for your glory, but for his glory. He has purpose for you and his kingdom. 2 Corinthians 6 and 1. He has purpose for you. So just come to him. Don't be out there wondering and guessing. This, this ain't no guessing game. Your life is important to him. That's why he brought you here. Through any means necessary, you are 
here. So just accept it. And start running from it. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Don't receive it in vain. The Amplified says working together with him we strongly urge you not to receive God's grace in vain by turning away from sound doctrine and his merciful kindness. Don't turn away from God. Don't run away. He has goodness for you. Better than anything you can plan to plot up in your life. So just submit to him. Say, God, I surrender to your will. Let your will be done in my life. I can't do it alone. I need you to lead me and guide me and tell me what to do. So work on your purpose every day. Every morning you wake up, you should ask God, what have you purposed me to do today to uplift you and your kingdom? What can I do in your honor, God? By working his purpose in your life, he can and will reveal your purpose in the earth, your calling. Everyone here is purpose the calling. You're called to do something. Amen. You're born to do something. Amen. You're born to change the world somehow with your calling. You just don't find out what it is. And what better person to tell you than the one who created you and made you? Can nobody else say, oh, you're going to be a ball player. Oh, God, I got good things for you. you you're going to do three good things for the kingdom. Listen to what God is saying. It's not about what everybody else's purpose for you to do. They can have alternate, uh, uh, alternate ideas for you to get money in their hands or something. You never know. That's why it's best to consult God in everything you do. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, everything else will come. It's not always about being wealthy and being at the top. And, no. They'll come. Seek God. Do his good works. And now when you need it, it'll be up to you. Don't worry about it. So don't waste your life. Don't waste your life with worldly distractions. Give God a reason to keep you in. Like that's right. Stay true to your identity. Fulfill your purpose and finish it. Just as Jesus did for you. Move when God tells you to do in his timing. With all that being said, tonight, keep these questions in your mind. No, you don't got to answer them right now. <laughs> but just think about them. If you were like Hezekiah, and you asked God for more time on the earth, and he asked you why, why should I give you more time? What would you say to God? What would you say to him about what you've done on this earth? What would be your reason that God gives you more time? If God revealed the last 15 years of your life, would he be eager to give you 15 more years? Would he? Are you a good steward over what he gave you to do? Are you doing his will? Are you willing to use what's left of your life to do God's will on the earth? To live and do as God planned for you to live? Are you willing to do that? I'm praying that you're saying yes in your mind and your heart and your spirit. Yes. That should be the answer. And if you're at a crossroads and you don't know how to answer those questions, I said, come on to Jesus. He can direct you to the right answer. He can lead you and guide you to exactly where he wants you to be in life. You don't have to know what it is. God will reveal it in time. Just do his will. Say yes. I say yes to you, Lord. I say yes 
to your way. Forget about your sins. Forget about your mishaps, what you did wrong, who they say you were acting like, your anger issues. Come on to God. He has a spot in his kingdom for you. Purpose for you. So don't give up. Lead me and direct me in your way, God. 
Let your will be done in my life. Let me be known for the good deeds that I've done in your name, Jesus. And even when I'm gone from here, you will continue to get the glory. You will continue to get the praise. You will continue to get the honor. And if you just stepped away, you've lost your way a little bit, God can bring you back on the right path. Just say, Lord, help me. Yes, I messed up. And I know you are forgiving God. Help me to forgive myself, to move forward. Not to stay in my pity where I am, depressed, thinking about what I did wrong. No, Lord. Help me to see the good. Because God can turn everything and make it good for you. Your mess up can turn into a step up. Just ask God to lead you and guide you through it. He's right there. Just say, Lord, help me. Lead me where you want me to be, God. Send me where you want me to go. Give me the strength and the boldness to do it. In Jesus' name. So I say yes. And I receive your love tonight. And I believe that I am a part of your kingdom now, Jesus. Yes, you are. You are needed. You are purposed to do his will. So we say yes and we receive it right now in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare that it is done right now, God. We will do your purpose in the earth. We will get more years added to us, God. Because we diligently seek you every day. We are confident in who you are in us. And we spread that word to others in you. And we thank you for that, God. In Jesus' name, it is done, it is done, it is done. So if you've spoken those words and if you prayed to your father, yes, yes. congratulations and welcome. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of God. That you have purpose. Ask God every day what, is, what your purpose is for that day. It could be something different every day or it could be the same thing every day. But you have to stay open to hear God and what he's purpose for you to do. Thank you, Lord. It's awesome in our purpose, y'all. It's an awesome thing. So seek it every day. Every day. Because you're a purpose here on this earth with a purpose. Just believe that. And if you heard God speak to you and you've turned your life around for the, for the night and you've spoken to God for the first time and I don't know how long, let us know. We want to hear about the good things that God is doing in your life. Because he's purposed us to be here to help you, so we want to know. That's also ministering. That's spreading his word. Amen. That's telling us about the goodness that he's done for you. me to speak to y'all tonight. And I pray that it's taking root in your heart and in your mind and in your spirit. That you have purpose. You have purpose. And we thank you, Lord. We don't want to leave the service without you all may want to give or want to bless God. Or maybe God has purpose in your heart to bless greater love. Listen to God. Stay open. Do what he's telling you to do. Give what he's telling you to give. So whatever it is, we got uh, the cash app is up. The cash app is up. Let God be God. Have no fear. God is always going to be with you. No matter what. 
So God, we thank you right now for purposing in our hearts and our minds to bless our ministry. To show us love. To show you love. Thank you for the words that have been spoken through this vessel, God. That help them change their life. To help bring them from the darkness into your glorious light. And God, we ask that you multiply that seed. Show forth your goodness towards them for being obedient and giving as you have purposed them to give tonight. Let them know that you are there, that you will provide. Just believe. And have faith in God. He will provide. Multiply the seed, God. Even if they didn't have to give, God, and they have purpose in their heart and they wanted to give, but they don't have it, just bless them in a mighty way, God. That their heart and their mind is in the right place. And we receive it and we're thankful for you, God. For allowing us to commune together in this time and this hour. To show forth your goodness and to speak your good words to those in need. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. And we receive it all in your name, God. For your word that you continue to get all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all God has given me. And I pray has blessed you. And we thank you for tuning in. Yeah. With great love. Yeah. Yeah. And also if you if you accepted God or, or you turned your life around and you're living for Jesus and you're saved and you've spoken those words to God to help you change your life, mm -hmm. go find a church. Mm -hmm. or reach out to somebody. Who's going to speak the good word, the good works, the good words of the Lord, the truth? We ain't got time for no fake stuff, y'all. Find someone who's speaking the truth. Where love's always open, Pastor Ray Little, will speak the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. Say it again. Say it again. He will bring it. A true alpha vessel of God. That's right. You don't like it, you can walk out. So our doors is open. You're free to come and tune in anytime we have service. Come on in, people. Come you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. That's right. I need you. And continue to be good and do good for God. Amen. Jesus name. Do your purpose in the earth. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters.